Hi and uh, welcome back. Just here at the front of the Sonics on the firewall, uh, just closing off the remainder of the firewall uh, to position anything inside this area that requires wiring to it. Um, and the reason being is that um, I have thankfully found someone who's going to help me with the wiring design and subsequent wiring looms and lengths. Um, and also uh, a circuit diagram and they are John uh, John Griffin who is the Australia distributor for or Australia Australia and Pacific also is Pacific light flying uh, for the MGL instruments here so a big thanks to them I'm going to put a link below uh, for their contacts um, and they, or John in particular has been very helpful uh, who has sent me a sort of a rudimentary starting block uh, of a circuit diagram. We had another conversation just gone on Friday. Um, he's now finalising that for me because I have uh, worked out the exact switching um, positions for the instrument panel of the Sonics. Uh, and that's what I'm here to, do, to finish off today, putting things like the RDAC, uh, the SP6 in their location so I can give him cable run links, um, uh, finalising the exact position of the autopilot, although a few videos or quite a number of videos back I did show those in position um, and I was waiting on uh, some things from Sonics to finalise those exact positions of which I can do, so if that makes sense. Um, a lot of the things were just sort of placed in spot, this is where I think they're going to go, but now is the time to have them uh, set in stone, if you will. So the RADAC, the RDAC, I keep calling it a RADAC, the RDAC is the one thing that's going to go on. So I started with the firewall yesterday uh, and I'm going to position, it, it seems to be the most common spot for it sitting inside there. Now I know that um, you've got to be fairly careful because anything you drill through this top section of firewall uh, goes straight into the fuel tank. Uh, so what I've done is I've just left a couple of rivets out on this point and a couple on here and I'm going to make up a, a little sort of standoff bracket which will position this. Uh, I know, I think uh, Gavin positioned his over here as well as doing the turbo uh, coolant catch can. I'm probably going to mount mine over this side and from what I can make out in the instruction manuals it doesn't require to be fixed to the, to the firewall. Now, if it does, at any stage, have to be fixed to the firewall, or if I do have to find that I have to drill back through the firewall, this row of rivets at the bottom here is away from the fuel tank, and probably from about one, two, three, four upwards, all that way is away from the fuel tank too. So I have, if I have to drill them out, uh, fingers crossed uh, that I don't, uh, I've always got this method. Now the method I, I like, I have been using, and I, I, it's just me, is I like to use these these hinges because they can the whole lot can just pop off and, and you can replace things if you need to. Now I know that the RDAC unit exact, it screws into this little box itself, um, but um, you know, I've got to modify this box if I'm going to position it on these hinges by cutting these two little tabs off so uh, that's why I've, t I've just removed all the circuitry out of it for the moment so just to recap uh, I am very thankful to Asia Pacific Light Flying who are the Australia and Pacific uh, area MGL distributors being very very helpful now look just let me just digress for a second every time I talk or email these guys I get them both confused One's John, one's Paul. It'd be pretty easy to remember that, but the problem is they're brothers and they sound identical on the phone and I get them mixed up all the time. I feel really bad, so if John happens to be listening or if Paul happens to be listening, I really am deeply apologetic for, for screwing their names up every time. So look, let me get on to mounting this and uh, I'll just see how this, uh, how this looks. Just before we go, I'm just gonna show you at the top of the fuel tank how I've finalized the catch can. I know there was a little bit of uh, talk about uh, 
trying to retain any spilt uh, fuel residues whilst filling the Sonic. So I'll just move the camera up here and we'll have a quick... So if you just look inside here, uh, this is the overflow from the catch can. Um, I'm just going to run a, a like a like a um, aluminium tube down to, to the underside of the firewall if anything gets caught in here. And just at the top of the Sonics, we remove the... Uh, oop, that should come out. There it is. Take that out. We'll look and we'll just put that down for the moment. And if you see inside there, what I've done is I've just put my catch can inside here. Here's the overflow, which is uh, sealed in there. This is just some um, high temperature RTV. It's about the only thing I can think of to use inside there. Uh, I'll give it another a second bite of the cherry later on, but um, I think it's worked out okay. Um, I mean, you know, you don't really want to spill any fuels in there anyway, but it's just there as a contingency. And that just sort of pops out through the firewall over here. And I'll just put, whoop, there it is. It put, pops out through the firewall over there and it just uh, sort of, you know, goes straight on the ground, I guess. So uh, that's that section of it. And I'll get away and I'll start to, so basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make these removable. There's the two hinges. This will be on a bit of an angle sort of going down. Uh, this will sort of come on an angle and then it'll be flat. Now the hinge will be on an angle but the aluminium bit that I'm going to be fixing the Ardak box to will be will be flat. It'll be face fixed either side. So let me just sort of get a little bit more done and we'll come back and hopefully it'll make more some more sense. Okay I've completed all of the firewall. Uh, put some RTV around uh, the um, overflow for the uh, fuel catch can. Um, happy with it. This is re the RDAC is removable um, and um, just done it with a couple of hinges uh, left over. I love using these hinges, they're just great for, uh, for um, removing things and also fixing things. So um, able to do it without uh, drilling holes in the fuel tank, I hope. Uh, but um, anyway, we'll just zoom the camera and have a quick look. Okay, here it is. Um, this is this little pin here. It just sort of slips up and pulls backwards should this need to come off. You've got the other uh, screws inside here which can also take this off. So the box is basically, the, the, the box itself for the RDAC is basically fixed in position. It's not going anywhere. Um, should you need to take the whole lot out in one piece, you can. You've got the contingency of pulling hinges out, uh, or hinge pins in this instance. I'm happy with it. Um, and as I said, I'll do the turbo on this side, the turbo um, coolant uh, reservoir on that side. Basically all done. Uh, ready to uh, to do the SP6 in the rear of the um, turtle, uh, the rear of the tail cone. Okay, I'm just... Uh, Lying on my back, uh, in the back of the Sonics, I had a couple of goes at trying to squeeze in there, but it's uh, just a little bit too tight. So basically what we've got is that's the seatbelt attach angle there. There is the other seatbelt attach angle there. I'm about one, two, three ribs back. Um, there's the there's oh, there's the cross tie box. That's the transponder. That's the V16 radio transceiver. Uh, and... If I mount it, if I mount this up there, I've got access from underneath here. Um, should I need to get in there and, and replace it, or rather than try to squeeze down inside the back of the aeroplane? Um, so this is the the YX version. For those that uh, don't know, uh, there is a little access panel just in here uh, to get to that mechanism. So I think that's probably a good spot. If I make this fairly easily removable there's all the the mecha, the plugs in uh, that plug into the back of it so if I mount it this way which it says on here anyway mount it this way if I have to replace it just unplug pull it out with my famous little hinge things that I'm going to make um, and that should work out okay so uh, I'll get away at the start that and um, chat with you all soon okay the SP6 is uh, complete and there's the two uh, seat belts on their attach angles, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I'll just zoom the camera in and you'll probably, s if that works, up to three, there you go. 
I've just mounted that um, SP6 on a couple of nylon um, M4 or M5s or something along those lines, uh, nylex uh, or, or plastic screws, keeping it off the, can you just see in there how it's floating off that um, aluminium there, so it's just, just mounted off to, uh, to what I believe is the way to do it. Uh, so I'll just zoom this camera around because I've made some modifications to the cockpit. So just closing off this um, this video, uh, I've made some modifications to the uh, inside lining of the fuselage sides. Um, before I had this uh, shape that I made out of fiberglass, I think I was over complicating it um, and although I was trying to convince myself that it wasn't intrusive, uh, I, I think what got me in the end was that I was just way too over complicating it. So I've kept the same design, kept the, uh, the red and black. Uh, I think it's uh, a much better, uh, well I hope it's much better. Okay, I think that's uh, way better. It's, uh, I've still kept that, that D shape. That allows this rudder cable to run all the way through behind and out the back. To the mixer control uh, the seats are easily pulled up as well and, and all my cabling from the rear of the uh, turtle deck can come through still as planned so nothing's really changed I'll just try to turn this camera around hopefully you can see this side as well so uh, I think it's uh, I think it's way 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 better yes it was over complicated yes I was stupid for doing so uh, but hopefully that gets the approval of all the Sonics builders and other home-built aircraft builders out there. Hope you enjoy. Talk with you soon.